Welcome or welcome back to Readability. If you didn't know already, this is a kid podcast that's all about reading. Don't know a good book to read? Visit Readability and I'll help you out. Every Saturday, I'll either read, review, or recommend different books just for you. Lay back and listen to this week's episode. Let's get started. Well, look at that. We're halfway through 100 episodes and it's the middle of the year. Kind of. I mean, it was yesterday, but due to my schedule posting, it's going to be today. Anyways, because it is the middle of the year, I wanted to do the middle of the year book tag. I would honestly love to do more book tags on this podcast. By the way, if you're unaware of what these book tags are, they're basically a list of questions that revolve around books, characters, etc. And there's a lot of them. An example of a question would be, show me a book that made you cry or made you happy, stuff like that. But most of the time, it's easier to understand and be entertained if you're visually watching someone pick the books out. But I think this one would still work in an audio form. Um, This is definitely going to be very overwhelming with some questions like, who's a new author you've read or discovered? Because literally, all authors I've read this year have been new to me. (laughs) Um, So we'll see what happens there. Also, if you were interested, I've read 39 books so far, so that's 10 extra than my 60 book goal. So 2021 has been very good book reading wise. Okay, I have the list of questions next to me, so we might as well just get started with the first question. Number one, best book you've read so far. How am I supposed to choose? I read so many good books, just like thinking about it. I can't choose. I've read The Six of Crows duology, Lovely War, of course, A Darker Shade of Magic, Cinder, The Seven Husbands of of Evelyn Hugo. It's a very long title, by the way. How am I supposed to choose? If you don't know this about me, I'm extremely indecisive, so that's a problem. There's pros and cons about every single book. Obviously, I'm going to focus on the pros of all of these books. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was beautifully written and taught me so many lessons. Cinder got me back into reading. Um, Six of Crows is just Six of Crows. The characters are fantastic. Lovely War evoked so many feelings in me. A Darker Shade of Magic, the world building, was just brilliant and amazing. How do I choose? However, if I had to choose, I think The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, it's just better. I was going to say it was objectively better, but of course, you are entitled to your own opinions about the book. If you don't know, this book is about Evelyn Hugo, a Hollywood actress at 79 years old who is ready to finally tell her story. However, she chooses a new and fairly unknown magazine reporter, Monique Grant. Why she is chosen is yet to be revealed in the novel. Throughout the story, we hear about the various scandals, affairs, forbidden loves, friendships, and pivotal moments that defined her career. It's a story that's just hard to forget, and wow, did I cry like a baby at the end. So heartbreaking and so, so amazing. Number two, best sequel you've read so far. Okay, unlike the last one, this one is quite easy. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, can't you just choose a book that isn't the first book in a series? Because, for example, the third book, it's a sequel to the second book, which was a sequel to the first book. It's a sequel and a sequel, but it's still a sequel, right? Whatever, I don't think that was the intent of this question. (laughs) It's common for a book series to have a middle book slump, and trust me, I've read some books that I didn't love that were a sequel. Crooked Kingdom, though, has to take the cake for this one. Best sequel. Um, okay, sure. It took me longer than anticipated to read. I think it took me nine days. Six of Crows took me, like, five days, I think. I mean, I... I read books pretty fast, so I was hoping that I would get through this one a little faster, but that doesn't define your reading experience. It's about the enjoyment, not the speed. 
The thing that really stands out in the Grishaverse, and especially with Six of Crows, are the characters. And in the second installment, you we got to see so much more of them um, and their development, especially with Matthias. And um, also some pretty iconic scenes. And that ending, oh, that ending will haunt me forever. I just, uh, wow. I would give a synopsis, but due to this being the second book, it would give a lot of spoilers for the first book. I can say that Six of Crows is about the six criminal, morally gray protagonists that have the responsibility of conducting this near impossible heist. It's action packed, funny, and yes, a very, very good duology. It's also fantasy, which I don't think some people know, but yes, it is also fantasy. Number three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Okay, I don't really keep up with the new releases of this year, uh, Zumi, but I do know that Casey McQuiston is coming out with, or came out with a book this June, June 1st, I'm pretty sure. It's called One Last Stop, and I don't really know much about it, but I do know to the point, I know enough to the point where I think I'll like it, and I'm almost done with her debut novel red white and royal blue which is very good thank you for asking and i would like to see what else this author has to offer does that rhyme author offer yeah wow spitting out rhymes um oh also off the record by cameron garrett i've seen it honestly sounds pretty interesting both are contemporaries and i'm kind of starting to get back into a fantasy mood because i kind of took a break from fantasy and so I might not pick either of these up like anytime soon, but hopefully once I'm in the mood for some contemporary romance, then I'll definitely give these a try. But I am, I have heard of these. Number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So for this one, I have three main ones. First on my radar was Gilded by Marissa Meyer, one of my favorite authors. It's a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, and it's coming out this November. I don't know what day, but sometime this November, which I'm definitely looking forward to. Another one is the classic, the amazing Rick Riordan. If you're not aware, he's coming out with a whole new series. Is it a series or a standalone? It might be a duology, I don't know, about mer people, like mermaids, mermen. People, stuff like that it sounds weird but like it's okay um it's called daughter of the deep yes it's called daughter of the deep and he just revealed some of the cover art like the uk cover art and i'm really excited to read about it do i know what it's about no nope, but honestly i trust rick Riordan, and it would be really interesting to see him just like step out of the pjo percy jackson universe for a second um, I know the King Chronicles aren't technically in that universe, but uh, just kidding, because he, they are, because he wrote separate books where Percy and Annabeth meet Carter and Sadie. So, yep, I think this is the first book he's written outside of the Percy Jackson universe. Good for him. Finally, These Violent Ends by Chloe Gong, the sequel to These Violent Delights. I haven't read These Violent Delights, but I've heard some pretty good things about it. And also, I hear it ends on a cliffhanger, so now I'm looking forward to that sequel so much more because I'm scared. (laughs) Number five, Biggest Disappointment. Man, I really hate to hate on books right now, but I guess I have to. Now, I heard um, someone say at this point about this question in particular that it doesn't really mean what is the worst book you've read so far, but more of which book did you have high expectations for, but they didn't end up meeting them. And um, it doesn't mean that the book is necessarily bad. However, I'll answer for both (laughs) the worst read book and the most disappointing. First off, this is the most disappointing read of 2021 so far, and this hurts to say, but I was really hoping to give House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune 
more than five, four stars. <laughs> Instead, I gave it three, and it really hurts to do that um, because for the first half, I really liked it. It was fun, and I loved the characters. I had high expectations for a bittersweet ending, which, yeah, there, there kind of was. A super heartfelt found family, which, sure, again, there was. Um, I did adore the six children, but I just wasn't attached as I thought I would be. The last half of the book took me forever to read. Like, this book took me 20 days to finish it. Um, let, let me see what books I read before I finished. Does, does that make sense? How many books did I read? I think I finished, um, ooh, um, Oliver Twist, The Cruel Prince, We Were Liars, The Wicked King, Queen of Nothing, and Lovely War before I finished The House in the Cerulean Sea. 20 days. Ooh. Um, oof. I guess I was bored, I suppose. I mean, I was overall, I was just kind of let down by this. This book is about the by the book caseworker, Linus Baker, who was sent to monitor and determine if this orphanage on this island should be shut down, basically. On the island, he learned some shocking secrets about the owner, Arthur Parnassus. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. And the children on the island that aren't particu particularly normal. <laughs> and also what it means to find your family and home. It's so good, I would recommend. But I hate to say that it just disappointed me. I guess it wasn't for me. I don't know. Next, um, the worst book I've read. And this one isn't one that was assigned to me. I'm not going to choose a book that was assigned to me for school. And this one was Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer, the last book in the Twilight Saga. This book, so bad. I'm sorry, Twilight fans, don't attack me. I, to be fair, I did still pretty much enjoy the Twilight Saga. It wasn't the best, but I didn't have, I, I didn't have high expectations going into it, so. But how was this book so bad? Like, I knew it was going to be bad, but oh my god, it was so bad. <laughs> the beginning of the novel was fine, I was entertained, but then Jacob's perspective came in, and then everything after that was so boring, like extremely boring. I wanted to fall asleep reading it. I'm being very brutal with this book, I'm sorry, but I have to say what I need to say. Number six, biggest surprise. On the other hand, what book surprised me? Well, here's the thing. I've been reading books that have already been super hyped about how good they were. So I, I don't think many books surprised me with how good it was. Actually, take that back. Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller was quite a surprise, actually. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. I, I could have finished both of the books in one sitting. <laughs> I could if it weren't for a consistent sleeping schedule and school. Um, but it was very, very good. The book follows Alosa Callaghan, daughter of the Pirate King, of course. And she is sent from her father to find this piece of a map. And she has to do that. And to do so, she has to purposely be captured by the enemy. On the ship, she is stuck with Raiden Alamos. Is that how you pronounce his name? Alamos. And there starts the enemies to lovers romance, yada, yada, yada. It was super fast paced and I couldn't put it down. Like right when I woke up, I needed to read a few chapters. It was that good. Like that genuinely surprised me with how much I would enjoy them. Number seven, favorite new author, debut or new to you? Like I said in that first intro segment, oh, so many, and so many great ones. Just to name a few, Marissa Meyer, Stephanie Meyer. However, I don't think I'm interested in reading any more books by her. Uh, v. Schwab, Lee Bardugo, of course, Taylor Jenkins Reid, Marie Lu. Definitely want to pick up Rebel by her. Holly Black. So many new authors, and for the most part, I'd be interested in reading more books by them. Um, 
They're also quite popular authors, so if you're in the book community often, you probably rec recognize a bunch of these women. Also realize that these are all women authors. Number eight, newest fictional crush. No oh boy, time to expose myself. <laughs> I think this means from any book series you've read so far, but I'm gonna go with the most recent, so we're not here for hours. There are so, so many, but I have to choose most recent of like the a million fictional crushes. Um, and that would probably be Cardin Greenbrier from The Cruel Prince, or the Folk of the Air trilogy, which is very good. I adore that series, and uh, I guess Cardin. Oops. Is he really mean? Yes. But only in the first book. Wait. Is it only in the first? Is he. Mm, okay. Let's extend that to the second book. <laughs> um, but don't worry. In the last book, he's much nicer. <laughs> he tries to kill Jude and her twin sister by, like, drowning them. But shh. I pretend I do not see. That's how he confesses his love for somebody. Um, I think it's Cardin, but I could be wrong. He's just the first that comes to mind. By the way, if you're interested, which you're probably not going to read this series, but I do recommend, The Cruel Prince is about a mortal girl, Jude, who finds herself and her two twin, her twi two twin, two sisters in the fairy world. Her sister's a fairy, but, um, she and her twin sister are not. Jude, at least in the first book, is determined to climb to the top of the ladder and become a knight for the king and queen, I'm pretty sure, uh, by proving herself worthy. Of course, this changes in the next books for reasons, but that's basically what's it, what it's about. Number nine, newest favorite character. Again, this one is really easy. It wouldn't be if the question was, who's your favorite character this year? Then we would be here forever. <laughs> um, and I think that was the true intent of this question, but I'm going with the most recent favorite character. Right? That's what... Anyways, I think Alex Claremont Diaz from Red, White, and Royal Blue is the perfect candidate for this answer. I mean, his perspective is hilarious. He's charming, smart. I'm pretty sure he's smart. Even though his personality gives off I'm dumb but cocky vibes. But no, I'm pretty sure he does really good in school. So, yeah. Sometimes I can relate to him a lot despite me not being the son of Ellen Claremont, the president. Um, but I can wish... Uh, I can also mention Henry from the same book. He's really sweet, but I would have to say that I like Alex a little better. Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston is about Alex, the son of the president, accident accidentally falling in love with the Prince of England, Henry. At first, they start off as sworn enemies. Okay, maybe not sworn enemies, but they don't really like each other. And then it slowly grows into a romantic relationship. Of course, they have to keep this romance a secret because it could ruin a lot, especially Alex's mom's career. Very, very good. Number 10, book that made you cry. I am a very emotional reader. Like I cry at everything. Um, even sometimes it's just like a mention to a memory or you do a memory. Um, and I start tearing up because I'm that sentimental. So as you can probably imagine, I have a long list of books that had made me cry, like sobbing. Most recent and probably the hardest I've cried at a book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Why must you torture me like this? Like even thinking about it, it's like, oh my God gosh then there were stars above and winter by marissa meyer um winter was the last book in the series and stars above was a collection of short stories um about the characters in the lunar chronicles but there was an epilogue that i read and it, this was more of a oh no it's over oh it's so sad because it's over kind of cry um so that was that <laughs> 
Then there was A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. Oh my goodness, those last words will hurt me, haunt me for the rest of my life. I was crying in the car on the way to school. It was that bad. It, I, uh, it was so sad. Um, it was a mix of character death, oh no, it's over, and something else I can't mention because spoilers, like separation. I mean, what? I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, V.E. Schwab is coming out with a spin-off continuation series in the same universe, and I, I'm just so excited to see Kel and Lila again. Oh, I'm so excited. And then the last two Legend Trilogy books. How dare Marie Lou hurt me in this way? Prodigy was super sad. I cried. Um, but Champion? Oh my gosh. It was the morning before school and I was like panicking because my face was all red from crying so hard. Um, it was really bad. So like I said, so, so many books have made me cry this year. A lot. And um, I'm expecting more to do so. Looking at you, Song of Achilles. <laughs> Number 11, book that made you happy. For this question, I swear I'm only going to choose one book. I promise. Okay, well, honorable mention, Red, White, and Royal Blue. It's making me smile so much and is so happy. I'm currently reading it. I'm like halfway, oh, a little over halfway done. Yes. But besides that book, I would say People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry just made me so happy. I don't think fantasy books can make you very happy because there's gonna be some death. Um, another honorable mention, just the entire Lunar Chronicle series because of the characters. Anyways, People Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. It was such a heartfelt friends to lovers romance contemporary um, that put a smile on my face. It's about these two people, Poppy and Alex, who have known each other for 10 years. Um, and how they reconnect with each other every year is by going on a vacation each summer. Except on the 8th, 10th, I forgot, summer, something happens that causes them to stop talking for two years. Now, Poppy has the chance to rekindle their friendship with another vacation she's invited Alex to. So the story changes from past to present perspective, so it goes back like five summers ago, and then it's this summer. So, which gives it a really fun flow. I really like this book, and though I listened to it through audiobook, I think the narrator still did it justice. I'm interested in reading Beach Read by the same author, so yeah, definitely people we meet on vacation. Number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. So I don't really have an answer for this one because I wouldn't say that any of the books I own are like that beautiful. To be fair, The Wicked King by Holly Black's cover is so stunning. Oh my gosh. So I would probably have to say that for a book I've bought. But have you seen the collector's edition for Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins? Oh my goodness. I need that. Like, I need it right now. It's on Amazon. It has sprayed edges, like very beautiful sprayed ed edges. It's hardcover. It has a map in it, a ribbon bookmark, and it's the price of a normal hardcover book. And it's not like thirty dollars. I'm around like eighteen dollars. And also, I've heard very, very mixed reviews on Anna and the French Kiss, so I kind of want to give it a try, see if I like it. But I definitely want that one. In number thirteen. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Okay, so I don't know if you actually know this, but I have a goal to read all the books I own in one year. Um, is that a bad idea? Probably. So, not by the end of this year, but when I start this reading goal, so I forget. What was it? Like around uh, April, I think, is when I said it. So, next April. Ooh, that's weird. <laughs> I'm scared. Um, so I want to get a good amount of books done by the end of this year, which wish me luck. Um, I, of course, am going to finish Red, White, and Royal Blue sometime this week. Hopefully, like, 
tomorrow or the day after that. Um, but also, I'm, like, really in the mood to read Shatter Me by Tahir Mafi. Like, I want to read it right after I finish this episode. Um, even even though I'm, like, in the middle of three books as of right now, I, like, I, I just want to read it so bad. <laughs> I don't know why. I also want to read King of Scars. That duology um, is a spinoff series of Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone. By the way, it's by Lee Bardugo. And it follows Nikolai. We stan. My friend read them and she said she liked them a lot. So now I just I, I want to read them now. I have an audiobook because I don't know why, but I don't really want to like physically have them. I'm not much of like a spinoff series kind of reader even though I read Heroes of Olympus but you know what that's a very important series so let's not talk about that (laughs) um though for the rest of my bookshelf I couldn't tell you I figured out I figured out that I'm much of a mood reader and I just read books based off of my mood so I could suddenly be in a classics mood or even in non-fiction mood I have no idea I'm it's very unpredictable and that's a wrap for this middle of the year freak out book tag i hope you enjoyed it was a lot of fun answering these questions because i actually have some pretty good books to answer them with and um yeah i really enjoyed this and i hope you did too i don't have much to say except i'm sorry for the next episode for next week wednesday i'm very sorry Uh, anyways um i hope you have a great day And I'll see you all next week. Keep reading, folks. Bye-bye.